Welcome to the Investor News. In this video, Robert Kiyosaki talks about the global and U.S. economic situations and what's next for the economy. Listen to what he has to say. Well, first of all, the reason I wrote Rich Dad Poor Dad was because I knew this time was coming. And we have, as a world, I've never been here before. And so is it a spooky time? Damn yeah. It is, a, it is probably the most dangerous time ever, 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 ever. There's, there's nothing to compare it to because there's never been a world economy before. For example, you know, a hundred years ago, if there was a stock market crash in England, it didn't affect anybody. Mm. Now the U.S. goes down, the world goes down. So plus with social media and all this we're doing now. And so we've never been here before. And, uh, you know, I, I, I'm excited about it because... I make more money in crashes than I do when they go up. So, but for the average person, they'll get wiped out. I'm afraid at the worst. I hope I'm wrong, but I think we're heading for a global depression. Global depression? Yeah. What does that look like? Depression. I mean, people are depressed. The economy stays down. It's hard to come back up. And now the good news is, is that for those who are prepared for it, like you and things like this, you'll do better. See, not everybody dies in a plane crash. Some plane crashes. But the last crash in 2008, you know, I was on Wolf Blitzer's program uh, six months before Lehman Brothers went down. And I said Lehman was going down. <laughs> and nobody listened, but it went down. And so I've been expecting this market to go down for quite a while. And I'm concerned about my fellow my fellow human beings. But as you know, most Americans are clueless. You know, they don't know what's going on. But you know, if you travel the world, I, I, just, I, just, I just got back from Africa, and China and Japan and New Zealand. People are scared. You know, Australia was, hasn't had a recession in 30 years. It's in recession. But Americans are fat, dumb, and happy having a good time, which is good. But I'm concerned. That's all I can say. I, I'd, be, I'd be afraid if I had kids. You know, I, I think as an adult, you can go hungry, but you don't want to see your kids go hungry. And that's what's going to happen. You think it's going to get that bad? Yeah. And the U.S. dollar is fake. Never, they, never in the history of the world has any fake money ever survived. And we're doing the same thing. We just keep printing this money. And when I wrote Rich Dad Poor Dad 20, almost 25 years ago, people said I didn't know what I was talking about. I said savers would be losers. Now, today, there's quantitative easing, which is counterfeiting money. Mm -hmm. And then you have zero interest rates. And people are still saving money. Are you nuts? They just printed, I think, $500 billion in September of this year because the repo market is going down. And the average guy goes, well, what's the repo? They do? No. So that's why it's fake money, fake teachers, fake assets. Our, our education system it, it has been my rant forever. Why don't we teach people about money? Why is it? We all use money, but we don't teach people about it. So that's why I'm concerned. And uh, I wrote this book, Who Stole My Pension? It's already sold out. But I wrote Who Stole My Pension because it was the reason I wrote Rich Dad Poor Dad. The two authors here, me and myself, uh, Edward Siddell, we both had dads who lost everything. And when I was in my 20s and my dad, my poor dad lost everything, it scarred me. And I said, I'm never going to let anybody ever do that to me. So I had just come back from Vietnam in 73. My dad was unemployed, poor dad was unemployed. And he tells me to go fly for the effing airlines. I said, are you kidding me? And he says, go back to school, get your master's and get your PhD. I said, are you kidding me? Here the guy is unemployed. He's got no pension. He's got no paycheck. And he's telling me to go back to mm. school. I said, what, learn nothing? You know, and those guys who my, uh, you know, my friends who flew for United Airlines, mm -hmm. they're broke today. There's pension. Their pensions were stolen. And Americans, oh, on how my 401k is doing. I'm going, gee, I'd be a little bit worried, but they don't know. Americans live in a fishbowl. You know, they can, everybody sees in, but Americans can't see out. So like I travel the world constantly. Mm -hmm. And what I see going on in the world, this disturbing. I was just in Argentina and I took my kid brother there and he came back a changed man. He says, you weren't kidding, were you? He said, no, I wasn't. My, my brother could not believe that what I, what happens in Argentina is going to happen here. So the fear today, I think people are a little bit wiser is because they do remember 2008 mm -hmm. and they do remember 2000. So 2008, two, I mean 2000, 2008, and here we are today. So I think most people are at least kind of tuned in. Uh, I hope it doesn't come down, but I'm afraid it will. But yeah. I want to say what you did was really, really smart because the best time to start a business is right after a crash. I made more money after 2008 than ever in my whole entire life because everybody was hiding like little cockroaches. You, wow, you made more money after 2008 yeah. than your entire life. Yeah. So when, you know, here I'm talking about the coming depression. Everybody says, Oh, you're, you're such a pessimist. I go, No, I'm excited. You know, 
I get sexually stimulated thinking about all the, all the, all the barkins that are going to be on the street. You know what I mean? I mean, it's going to be barkins everywhere. But everybody else, oh, you're pessimistic. No, I'm actually optimistic. Mm. So anyway, so you're very smart. Just, you know, when I study, I study business. Guys who start right after a crash do very well. Most of the time. The 2008 was, was Wall Street. Toxic assets. assets. Toxic yeah. assets. CDOs, MBSs. Yes. yes. You know, derivatives. Mm-hmm. And so what is it today? Wall Street just looted the pensions. So- Before we continue, help us clicking that YouTube like button and subscribe now to our channel. This shows the algorithm that you valued this information. And it helps us spread that message. Sharing is caring. And now, let's continue. So this book, Who Stole My Pension? It's like I said, my co-author is an SEC attorney. And he got sick and tired of seeing all these bankers loot the pensions and get paid bonuses. And then the labor union guys who manage the funds get paid bonuses. And the guys who manage it get paid bonuses. Meanwhile, the workers get screwed. So when this next crash comes, it's going to be horrible. Now you look at the other guys. So there's two authors, Ted Sedell, SEC attorney. His father was a CIA operative in Uganda. And Idi Amin killed his father. So his family went broke because there was no body. Mm. He couldn't collect anything because no body, no you know, corp- corpse. Whereas my father ran for a political office against the governor of Hawaii, and he got crushed. And the governor says, you are no job, no paycheck, no pension. So my old man's broke. So it kind of put us on edge. You know what I mean? I don't mm-hmm. trust mm-hmm. my government. I'm not, I'm not a Republican or Democrat. I like Trump. But they can't save me. You know, Trump, Biden, Sanders. I mean, it's a cast of characters, right? You got the Donald on one side. And then you got Comrade Sanders, a commie. It's a, it's a reality TV show up there. <laughs> You're counting on the government to take care of you? I mean... Wake up. So you don't at all look at it as they have an effect over your net worth or your next moves? No. So so you're... That's, that's good. You want to make sure that no matter which who's in office or who if it crashes, you're okay. That's the most important thing you can do. To you me. don't pivot based on presidents? No, of course not. They don't affect me. You don't pivot based on presidents? No, I'm not a stock guy. That's why. Okay. So I'm a real estate guy. I own businesses. So the rich dad company does better in a crash. And apartment houses, they always do well because people have to have some place to live. Mm-hmm. And I want oil wells because people are always burning oil. I always protect my assets that they're crash proof. So let me ask you, the average person's watching this right now saying, okay, Robert, I'm not like you. I don't run a company. I don't have a brand. I haven't sold 41 million copies. I don't have oil. I don't have rental properties. What can I do? I'm in a time like this. You're telling me the market's going to go in shambles here pretty soon because of currency and we printed half a trillion dollars of uh, money in September just in one month, not including the three trillion dollars we printed in the last seven years prior to that. What do I do to be prepared for a time like this? Well, first of all, everybody can do something, but they won't. And that's the problem. The reason, you know, who stole my pension, there was plenty of money in it, but nobody did anything. They just stole it. People did nothing. It's like I said, the, um, when the crash came in 2008, not one of those guys went to jail, they got paid for it. So there's something rotten inside America. And I think the problem with many Americans is they're complacent. They expect, well, it'll it'll heal itself. So the thing that everybody can do is, you know, like um, my first investment was a gold coin in Hong Kong. I bought a Kruger. I was flying off, I was flying off an aircraft carrier mm-hmm. in Vietnam, mm-hmm. and I went to Hong Kong and I bought a gold Kruger. In. The date was 1972, but that gold coin today is worth almost two thousand dollars. The one gold coin. Yeah, and I still have it. So What'd you pay for it? Fifty cent. Fifty dollars. $50 to $2,000, 1972. Yeah, it just sat there. So I have, mil- I, and so I never, because I understand money, that, you know, quantitative counterfeiting <laughs> and zero interest rates, I don't trust the dollar. So for most of my life, I've saved gold and silver. So I have millions of gold coins and silver coins. I just kept saving it because I don't trust the dollar. So everybody can buy a silver coin today for 20 bucks, a silver gold, silver eagles, 20 bucks. But how many people will go to a coin shop and buy it? Probably none. Less than one tenth of 1% of Americans own precious metals. And silver today is 50% below its all time high. So silver is the biggest bargain sitting in the market mm-hmm. as we speak today. You know, it's about 20 bucks. It should go to 50. So at 20 bucks, and I tell my friends, I go, oh, yeah, think about it. That's the problem. So everybody can afford 20 bucks. You know, kids can mm-hmm, afford 20 mm-hmm. bucks. 
The thing is, people won't do it. And, and you know that, too, when you deal with people. Most people are pretty sedentary. You know, they, they want to do the same old thing. Sure. Happy. Nothing's going to happen. Oh, he's just trying to scare me. But I was talking to my doctor last night. You know, he says, you've been saying this stuff for 25 years. I never listened to you. He says, now what do I do? Because his 401k, as we cover in this book here, the average firefighter has about 1.2 million pension, but there's nothing there. What do you mean? Their payout's going to be about 1.2 million. The average, the so average firefighter retiree has a 1.2 million dollar pension. Hungry. Yeah, they, that's how much they'll get paid out. Okay. But there's nothing there. It's a problem. <laughs> Meaning what? Meaning they don't have the money to pay the benefits. It was stolen. It was stolen by Wall Street. So how is that's that going to be fulfilled? That's why we wrote this book. How is it going to be fulfilled? Because I know one of the stats you said. You said uh, by 2050, 2 billion retirees would be uh, above the age of 60. What was the stat you said about? Uh, okay. In 10 years, 2030, 2 billion baby boomers across the world will retire. Japan's broke. Argentina's broke. China's broke. Italy's broke. Germany's broke. All these old guys are retiring. And the stock market, you know, I was at, I live in a fairly exclusive place in South Carolina. And I was talking to my friends there. They were, it's, oh, we love Trump. We love Trump. Stock market's an all-time high. And I said, yeah, but so is our debt all the time. See, they watch the stock market. They don't watch the debt. And the repo market, the repurchase market, is the biggest, one of the biggest markets in the world. The Fed is bailing that one out. So the average American is watching the stock market, but not what's, what's really going on. So that's why I wrote, who stole my pension? So that means retirees, their kids, taxpayers will pay for the heist. So, so, so let me ask you this. So one is you said, uh, buy coins, uh, whether it's, but you don't, you don't buy gold. gold coins. You don't buy gold coins to make money. You Long buy term. gold coins because the dollar is going to go down. So I don't trust the dollar. Anytime Buffett says, I remember when Buffett says, I'm buying 30, he bought $35 million of silver. I don't know if you remember that yeah. when he bought it. You're like, okay, be prepared because something's about to happen. Yeah. Right. If he buys gold, just be ready in the next six, 12, 24 months. He's anticipating some kind of a, uh, crash to be taking place. He's oh. right now in cash because that's he's, smart. Yeah, he's anticipating something to happen yeah. to buy up businesses and rebuild them. He does that all the time. And then he's going to go in after the crash. He's going to go after the crash. I have bad news for you. If you're not rich by now, you're screwed. And if you're in debt, you're even double screwed. How so, you might wonder. Well, the sad truth is that you're working your whole life to make someone else rich. The mega corporations, the banks, the politicians, everyone is getting richer. They get your money. And what is even worse, they get your time. They get your life. You are not even in a rat race. You're in a financial prison. But what could a solution for you look like? Honestly, I don't know, but I know what a solution for me would look like. It's very simple. I use whatever money I have and I multiply it with 1,000. This could make my life much easier and probably yours as well. If you have $1,000 available and multiply this with 1,000, I believe that this could solve some financial issue for the one or the other. Of course, if you're ugly, you would have to multiply it with much more than 1,000. My name is Marco Stan, and this is what I decided to do. I decided to 1000x my money. This is not a joke. I know what you may be thinking. You know, what, what, what is this guy talking about? You know, how should this work? This is not possible. Well, I made a detailed video where I laid out my plan. And some clever folks might even want to look at this plan and copy it and do exactly what I do. This is just a little hint on the side. You have two options. You leave, you forget what you have seen. You do whatever you're doing and you hope that somehow you get some other results. Good luck with that. Or you click the link below the video. You enter your email address because I'm not showing this to everybody. You at least watch my video on how I plan to 1000x my money. The choice is yours. Make the right choice. Join me. See what a different future you could have. See at least how I intend, how I plan to do the thousand X. So click on the link below, enter your email address, and I see you on the other side. Your Marco Stan.